Hello and welcome back. I am Sithrith and welcome to episode 85 of my Lotro Loremaster Let's Play. Uh, we are working on finding Deornid, a new sword from a Guaradan. And um, also, we have to find or destroy some Guaradan traps, which is uh, kind of what I was in the middle of doing last time before then I ran into that random rare elite thing. I just also want to point out that, um, so you can see up in the corner here, it's six minutes to dawn. And so it's like still nighttime sky-ish, but the dawn is creeping in um, because they've added like in Riders of Rohan they introduced new s sky tech. I don't know how to describe it. New sky technology and oh no, it stopped. But um, they introduced new sky technology that uh, basically made sunsets and sunrises more vivid. And um, yeah, they've added that into the older zones, and yeah, it was pretty amazing looking with the um, northern light auroras combined with the, like, oranginess of dawn. It was pretty cool, so, um, yeah, that's what I was pointing out, and then it kind of disappeared. It's still a little bit there, but it was more vivid, like, a minute ago. But yeah, so that's what I was pointing out. Anyways, killing stuff. Um... So yeah, we just have to defeat two more traps. Defeat, you know, destroy, whatever. You know what I mean. And find Deornid a new sword. Now this find Deornid a new sword quest is super annoying. Um, and it pretty much always has been. Uh, I don't know why. It just is, like, for some reason, like, it take. It, sometimes I don't even finish it because the drop rate from the Guardan is so low. It's ridiculous. Like, I a lot of times just don't even finish the quest. I might not. I might just kind of keep it just you know, in my quest tracker. It's not like I'm prevented from doing any other quests um, by not doing it. Well, kind of. I won't get the Heroine of the Lost title or whatever it is. Um, I think the traps are on... Oh, this way, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's a really annoying quest and I'll probably just keep it around until it eventually gets finished, but yeah, it's obnoxious for not really any reason. Basically, like, the, like, Turbine's modus operandi back in the day was, um, not great drop rates. Like, that's why a lot of the older zones are being revamped, or have had, uh, even if they aren't, um, fully revamped, a lot of times in, oh, what's attacking me? Oh, hello. You are attacking me. But yeah, um, for a while their new older zones were getting drop rates adjusted because for a long, long time um, it would be like, oh, collect ten tusks from boars or whatever. Um, just so that it wasn't kill ten boars. But then that meant because of the drop rates for those tusks, you'd end up having to kill twenty or thirty boars just to get ten tusks. And some areas were worse than others. Um, this Deornid quest is pretty bad still. Uh, Lonelands, uh, particularly was very well known for having terrible drop rates, and that was adjusted quite a few years ago. And then Lonelands was also fully revamped. I think Lonelands has been revamped twice now. Um, so that's a thing. And yeah, so, drop rates are not consistent. Um, it depends on if the zone has been updated or not. I don't think this one has. Alright, so we defeated the last trap that we needed, so we have to uh, go talk to Nico, and along the way I'm going to kill any Guardans that I come across, just in case one of them happens to, si to decide to drop this sword that I need. Um, it's stupid, especially, because like it's not even like, oh, find this very specific sword that Deorn had lost. That one was an easy drop. This one is, no, find a new sword from a uh, Guardan. So it could be any sword, but drop rate super low for no reason. So, I, it doesn't make any sense, but what are you going to do, I guess? Oh yeah, so today, before I woke up, so I didn't get to watch the video, and I just haven't gotten around to watching the... Or I didn't watch the stream, and I haven't gotten around to watching the video. But today there was a Q&A uh, live chat thing with... Uh, executive producer Aaron Campbell. I think it was a live thing. Uh, and um, it answered a lot of questions. I guess, like I said, I haven't been able to watch it. I'll link to the um, cool, the like summary that Ethelros did for Electro Players. And that's got a good summary. But one thing 
that really stuck out was that they were talking about update 15 and what's going to come with that. And as we know, update 15, we're going to be working on the Siege of Pilargear. And apparently, we are going to be doing an epic battle in Pilargear, which again, we kind of knew already. But it's going to be very different from the epic battles that we've done for Helm's Deep. Instead of a defensive epic battle like we did with Helm's Deep, this one will be offensive and we'll be trying to take back the city of Pilargear um, along with Aragorn and the Army of the Dead. So that's cool. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, click meat and antlers. That's pretty doable. Okay, thanks, Nico. Um, anyways. Right. Oh, right, this lady has a quest. I should take it. Okay, so this lady's a minstrel. She is the minstrel of the Fellowship that is lost. And, um, yeah, she's lost all her sheet notes, apparently. So, yeah, we have to go find them. Anyways... So yeah, an offensive epic battle will be really interesting, uh, especially because a lot of the, I feel like a lot of the problems people have with epic battles currently are based on them being defensive, or the the problems people have with them have come about because of the way Turbine created them because they're defensive. So for example, um, currently epic battles a lot. One of the problems people have with them, although it has been slightly fixed in update 14 is that you do not get aggro, like the mobs do not aggro on you pretty much ever. And so people had a problem with that. Um, update 14 has changed that a little bit, where if you do a certain amount of damage to them, they will aggro on you now. Which isn't great for lower level characters who are being scaled up to level 95, so I definitely recommend you know trying not to aggro the mobs if you are sub, say, like 80-85, but otherwise I think you should be okay. And, um, yeah, so that's, I think, that was a mechanic that was around, that was around because it is a defensive, um, skirmish, or epic battle, not a skirmish, different things. But I don't, like, I don't know if that's true or not, that's just my speculation, that's what I think might have happened, and yeah, so, it'll be definitely very interesting to see an offensive epic battle, because that kind of changes the entire way that our current epic battles are set up. I mean, when you think about the differences between an offensive skirmish and a defensive skirmish, again, they're very different. Basically, in a defensive skirmish, you wait for waves to come to you, and it's very passive. Whereas an offensive one, you totally dictate the flow of battle. Um, you determine if you want to, you know, stick around and heal or not, or whatever. So, it's... It's going to be very different. I'll be interested to see this whole fighting with the Army of the Dead and Aragorn thing as well. Finally got all the meat and antlers that we need. And all we need now is, again, find Deornid a new sword, which is, you know, always going to be there. And find Bergthrith's first sheet still. Um, So, yeah, we have to kill Tundra Bears to find that. Uh, I didn't really come across any over here while I was getting the... Uh, moose because they're not in the same area so we're gonna go over that way uh, as you can see that darker ish blob on the map that's where they are supposedly also this orange blob that I'm just walking into right now apparently there is a Guaradan or something here where I can get a sword except that there isn't so um, yeah I there's a whole lot of ways that this quest is just just weird I you can tell because of the way that the quest guide is mapping it. It's like there's this orange blob here in the middle. There's this orange blob way up to through Kurulari, Talvimuri, etc. There's like one quest ring over by um, Voy Telta, and then another weird little orange blob over by Pinti Peldot. Then another one just to the east of Pinti Peldot and a bit north. Like it's really bizarre. It's like this quest is just such a weird thing. And it's part of why I just sometimes say, forget it, don't do it. I don't know what the heck was going on when they made that quest. But it's, as you can tell by the quest guide map, it is messed up. Yay, level 47. Alright, so next he wants us to kill Kelpakita, which are um, the things, the saber teeth, and Pitkahamas, which is a, like, uh, I think it's either a signature or an elite 
um, Sabretooth over in that area where I was collecting snowbells, like, I don't know, two episodes ago? Maybe last episode also a little bit? Um, alright, no first sheet. Oh look, a Guardian Thief. Maybe we will get a sword from him. But probably not. I found a missing page of Book of Beasts, though. But, yeah, no sword. Uh, that's too bad, I guess. Um, did I get a new class point with that level raise? I did. I did, I did. Okay, so what do I want to spend points on? There's this, which is plus 10% chance for a lightning storm to ignite the ground, which sounds crazy. Um, that's nuts. What's this? Uh, plus 10% chance to apply two stacks of burning embers at once. Nice. Um, what's this? Fend them off. Eh. Burning embers pulses. I'm gonna go with this, because igniting the ground is just nuts. Let's do that. I want to ignite the ground. Insanity Lore Master is basically the name of the game I'm playing, really. Um, yeah, alright, so Tundra Bears and, um, I guess we can't really go kill Tundra Bears and killing the saber tooth things at the same time. They're not really in the same area, so we'll just have to do one and then the other. Which is, yeah, it's not great, but whatever. I kind of want to use Lightning Storm just so I can have a chance to ignite the ground. Because that just sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Let's do it. 10% chance to ignite the ground. Oh yes it did! Look at that! That's insane. Okay. <laughs> amazing. Okay. So that's really cool. And I really enjoy that skill. I really like Lore Masters. They're fun. I can light things on fire. And I can hit them with lightning bolts, and then I can hit them with lightning bolts that set them on fire. <sighs> it almost makes me want to play my runekeeper more as well. Ooh, you guys, look. Mammoths. Don't think I've run into any of these uh, wild-ish mammoths yet in this playthrough. So here they are. Look, mammoths. Um, they're elites. I'm not going to fight them. But as you can see, there they are. They're mammoths. A weird thing I've noticed, though, is that like their faces are bare, which is weird. You'd think that'd be pretty cold, especially their ears. But yeah, mammoths. That's a thing. Uh, we'll run across some evil mammoths that we might have to fight later on. If I don't get to level 50 before then, because as I've said, once I hit level 50, I'm out of here. Actually, I might get out of here at like, level 48 or 49. Um, because honestly, I just love Aregian, and I really just want to start talking about Aregian and how awesome it is, and... I feel like I should at least wait till I'm in a Regan, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. Also, once we get to a, once or before we go to a Regan, like I'll get to level 48 or 49 or whatever, and then I'm gonna catch up back on the epic story, and uh, that should take us back to a Regan, um, depending on how long it takes me to catch up on the epic story. So yeah, that's gonna be a thing after Forakel. So Forakel, epic story, a Regan. Um, Mines of Moria. That's the thing that's gonna happen. Oh look! Another rare elite. Or a rare signature, which is not as exciting. Uh, Rivo Kaihu. Let's do it! Alright, Burning Embers. And that. Light of the Rising Dawn. And Sticky Gourd. And let's just do Lightning Storm, because why not? Oh, nope, he's dead already. Never mind. Alright, I got a Barrel Shard. And, yeah, mostly junk. A reputation item. So, yeah, I've got a lot of Barrel Shards, actually. I know that's Adamant Shards. No, yeah, I have three Barrel Shards. That's quite a lot. Back in the day, that would have been a lot, but not now. Anyways, I think I've been talking a lot this episode. So I think I'm going to stop and say thank you very, very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, just chat or whatever. And yeah, I'll see you around the internet.